We're going to start off in Banbridge and we're going to trace the route of the old Banbridge to Newcastle railway line. Banbridge station was in here beside Huntley Road, which is now an Ulster bus depot. And I talk in some more detail about this location and the location of the old station and where we could put a new station in Banbridge. If you watch my other video where I talk about the Lisburn to Banbridge line, I talk in more depth about that. And in the other video, I follow the course of the old railway underneath the main street in Banbridge through the tunnel, through the park. This is where the trains used to run. up through the middle of what is now this large dairy, Fen Valley and Lakeland Dairies, and we go out into the fields and we pick up the line to Castle Well. And just to give you a bit of history here, uh, Banbridge Station was open from 1859 to 1956. Now there was a railway running down through County Down, the Belfast and County Down Railway, that ran from Belfast to Bangor. That line is still operational. There used to be a line on that railway that went down through Dundonald, Comber, St. Field, Crossgar, down Patrick, and on down to Newcastle with a branch line running up to Castle Wellen. There is still a little bit of railway activity here. There's a heritage line that runs around by down Patrick for four miles. So it goes through down Patrick and a few stations on either side of it. So I encourage you to look that up, the down Patrick and County Down Railway. I want to take a steam train journey sometime. So the Ban Bridge Line, uh, this was opened in 1906, the Great Northern Railway, which you're seeing here in blue. This connected Ban Bridge to Castle Wellen and effectively connected Ban Bridge to Newcastle. So let's go and follow the line out through the fields. We can see the cuttings still clearly visible. We could probably walk through this or hack through it. Crossing over the ban, I'm going to zoom out a little. Quite a lot of stations were on this line. There were stations called Corbett, Poland's Bridge, Kate's Bridge, Ballyrooney, Drum Donald, Ballyward, Leitrim, Castle Wellen, and then finally Newcastle. You might wonder why there were so many stations, and well, we'll come to that. We'll discuss that. Do we have a crossover point here? What can we see? Not much evidence of the railway remains here. Is that it? Now that's some entrance to somebody's house, I think. Oh, that's the river. Never mind. I think I see a bit of an embankment here or a cutting. Hard to tell from here. Some places there's just not much evidence was left of the railway. And now we go out into the fields and we get a little bit lost here. The land was returned to agricultural use and all traces of the railway disappear here, but we can pick it up again with these hedges lined up through the fields. Very close to the river. See more cuttings here, very close to the river at Kate's Bridge, and there was a station here at Kate's Bridge. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, this is where it was. So the trains would have passed underneath this bridge here where these walls are. Someone's built a house half on top of the line. This shed apparently was part of the original station building. And you might wonder what was a station doing out here in what we would consider now to be the middle of nowhere. We'll see a few stations like that. Okay, I need a little bit of help here. I'm going to go back to my little tool. So we passed Corbett Station. There's not much left of Corbett Station. Kate's Bridge. Bally Roney. So where did the line go? There's the river. Crossed over the river, okay. So the line would have crossed over the river. Here it is, there's the cutting. <clears throat> I see it now. Yep, yeah, there's the cutting, unmistakable. And we're in for a treat here. This is Ballyrunny Station, I think. 
and we can see how much of the station is still intact, pretty much all of it. I believe this is a private residence now, someone has converted the station building into a home. And there's an old building here which I believe was part of the original station too. Yeah, that looks like a pretty old building. A few modern roof, some modern roof materials have been put on it. It's uh, various states of repair. Don't know if it's improved much since then. But look at these old loading docks. This is really old. So what was the station doing out here in the middle of nowhere? Well, what you got to remember is. Agriculture in those days was more labor intensive than it is now, so more people lived out in places like this. So there were more people coming and going, but also livestock, food, produce. In those days it was all moved by rail. Road transport as we know it today was still in its infancy back then. Lorries, we think nothing of them nowadays, but they weren't as powerful in those days, weren't as affordable, there weren't as many of them. and. Goods would have been moved by horse and cart or by donkey and cart to a point like this and transshipped onto trains and for distribution through places like Newcastle or Belfast. So potatoes, for example, would have been loaded into carts in bulk and they would have been taken to a station like this. And in this building, that's where the potatoes would have been transferred into bags and then the bags would have been loaded onto the trains. And apparently, by all accounts, these were very busy places. A lot of people coming and going, a lot of farmers coming and going, a lot of goods coming and going. Much more busy than nowadays. There are old photos, hundreds of people gathered around these stations. Totally different time. And again, I'm losing it. Where did it go? Did it go up this way? I think so, yeah. So the line turns around here, I think. Yeah, there it is. There's the cutting. Take a look at a few crossover points here if we can. Is the old bridge still visible? And that might be it. Yeah, there's the old bridge. Quite high above the fields, so the trains would have passed through underneath. Right here, up this path. Let's keep going east. Much of this line has faded away, but you can still spot it if you know where to look. Ballyward Road. So Ballyward, there would have been a station around here somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where. Not much trace has been left of the old bridge. I'm guessing that uh, this road has been rebuilt and reconfigured quite a bit since the line closed. Let's keep going. Could this have been Ballyward Station? Well, there's a house there now. So, hmm. okay, I'm not sure where the station would have been there. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. Aha, Station Road. That's always a good cure, good clue. There it is. I see the station now. And again, we're in for a treat here. There is the station building. Again, this would have been another busy little place. Farmers dropping off their goods, livestock, sheep, cattle, fowl, all manner of animals, as well as people passing through. And look at that, the signal box is still intact. I think that's fantastic. Very rare to see a signal box still intact, even on a live railway. But uh, to see it on a disused railway is very impressive. A few other little buildings all related to the railway, all still in pretty good shape. So I hope someone's taken good care of these buildings. They really are part of our heritage. Irreplaceable once they're gone. Keep following the cuttings. A little crossover point here. This bridge should be intact. Yeah. So the old cutting is now full of water. So at first glance you think you're passing over a river, but you're actually passing over a disused railway. Now we get to Leitrim here. There was a station here in Leitrim. I'm not entirely sure exactly where it was on this. And here we see a housing development. 
placed on top of the old right of way. Now this kind of grinds my gears a little because <clears throat> you know I'm all in favour of development and how developers building housing. We need housing. I get it. But look at all the available land. Of all the places you could have put these houses, was it really necessary to put them on top of an old railway land? Now this is going to make it very difficult to repurpose this old disused line. Whether we convert the line to a greenway or restore the railway, this throws a big spanner in the works. How are you going to get around these houses? I really think there should be a law that says you cannot build homes on, or anything on top of a disused railway line. Let's keep going east. The line is very faded at this point. I might have to resort to using my little tool. Is this the railway I'm following? Crossover point here. Let's see what that looks like. Looks like farm buildings have been built on top of the tracks. That's definitely a, an old railway bridge. Got some modern bricks put on top to stop it from disintegrating. Uh, look at that, someone's built a home on top of it. Let's keep going east. Old Bridge Road. Let's take a look at the Old Bridge. Let's see, is there anything left of it? Yeah, there is. I'm impressed by how well maintained how these walls have survived. I suppose this one has survived partly because of the modern bricks put on top to stop it disintegrating, which is no bad thing. It takes a bit of the character away from the bridge, I think, but gotta do what you gotta do, I suppose. And now we're turning south. I think we're getting into Castle Wellen here. Yeah, we're getting into Castle Wellen. And the tracks really disappear under what is now an industrial area. There's a station road here. That's always a good clue as to where the station might have been. And this was the old station master's house. And the tracks would have gone through somewhere here. So this is roughly where the station would have been, which is now an industrial area. So again, if we're going to get this line reopened, we might have to skirt around this area, thread the needle, get the tracks through here maybe. That's a bit of a challenge, but not impossible, not insurmountable. Let's keep following the field, through the fields. South we go, the hedges are all lined up neatly. Fairly easy to follow until we get out into the country and again I'm going to have to resort to my old tool. Thank you David Chambers for putting me onto this tool. So there's the B180. So the line came down here and then turned towards Mahara. Let me see if we can pick it up. Yeah the line turned somewhere up here. There's really not much left of it now. It's very hard to trace. I have a funny feeling it's somewhere around here. It went near this round tower and then turned south and we now go into, I think this is the line here. You see these very faint landscape features like different type of soil was put back in to, to uh, fill the cutting. So the grass grows a slightly different colour. You get little clues like that, little bunches of bushes and hedges lined up. That's all the evidence that's left that a railway ever turned, uh, ever went through here. And then we get these little streets lined up this way and that way. So the, tr the tracks came down here, through the middle of what is now a housing development. This is a caravan park and this is a caravan park. So a caravan park is a little easier to move out of the way than a permanent housing development. If you're thinking about restoring the line and getting the train back into Newcastle. And the line crossed over here, down beside the golf course. It's split into two actually. Let's take a look at it on the historic tool. So it went very close to Down Royal Golf Club and the Sleeve Diamond Hotel. And let's just go to I want to show you this little feature here <clears throat> again this is a, a road beside a road why would you put a road beside a road it wasn't always two roads beside each other this what we're on here I believe was the railway 
Now it's been heavily developed. A lot of homes and businesses have been built on top of this, so I really don't think it's feasible to get the railway restored on a, all of its original route. Certainly not down here. There's just too much development has uh, gone through in the meantime. Maybe you could narrow this road up a little. I don't know if this road needs to be as wide as it is. Look at the big wide footpath that we have here. Have you ever wondered why is the footpath so wide at this point? Because you're walking on a former railway. Or at least these people's front gardens used to be the former railway. And then we get into the middle of Newcastle and there's a Lidl here, grocery store, supermarket. Beautiful old building. There it is, Newcastle train station. Now it's a supermarket. So I'm delighted that there's a business operating in here, that there's people actually taking care of the building and maintaining it, and it's, it's another use for the building. I'm glad that it's still useful. My only gripe is this. Some modern windows and uh, this wall seems to have been rebuilt in a modern style. Now, by all means do what you have to do to maintain the building, but I really think these windows could have been built in the same shape and the same size as these windows here. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think this one needs to be bricked up. You know, we could restore the windows here. Let's try to bring back some of the original architectural style. So I'd love to see this building getting remodeled and uh, the old windows the windows being rebuilt here. It can be rebuilt with modern materials and modern bricks. It doesn't have to be an exact replica of what we have here, but it sh there should be some hint of the building's history. And it should look something like it was originally intended. Just to give you an example, one thing I particularly like is here in the hometown of Lurgan, here's Lurgan Library. It's not letting me click around, what's going on Google? Here's where the library was extended. There's the original building. Uh, the original library just went from here to here. And the library was extended in the 90s, I think. Late 80s, early 90s. This is all new. This is all new. This section of the library is an exact replica of the original part of this part of the building. But it's done with modern materials and in a modern style. But the windows are the same shape and size as the original windows on this section. That's a testful way of, of dealing with buildings like this. So if you were to extend this building, it should be extended in you know, the style of the original building. That's just a little architectural thing that grinds my gears. So <clears throat> how do we get the railway line reopened then? How do we restore it? It's gonna be a challenge getting the railway back through here, to be honest. Um, I firmly believe that the closer to the center of town the train station is, is the more useful it's going to be. Maybe we could persuade the owners of this caravan park to part with some of this land and then you could put the station in somewhere like here, which is accessible from this road. So you know your station entrance could be here on the main road. Walk into the station, pick up your train, head back up to Banbridge. That's one option. Yeah, maybe you could somehow persuade the owners of the golf course to part with a bit of their land. I don't know how achievable that is. So it's going to take a bit of thought. Are there any other places in here we could get a railway line? Or you might decide to get it in as far as where the caravan park is now. And then the question becomes, what do people do when they arrive in Newcastle with no car? How do you get around? Because it's quite a big distance. The interesting things to do in Newcastle stretch for quite a bit. I mean, what is the distance from from our caravan park? Let's go actually to the from one end of Newcastle to the other. How far is it? Down to about here. That is approximately 2.56 miles. Two and a half miles. That would be quite a big distance to walk. So there needs to be a convenient way of getting around Newcastle without a car. And for by that, this coast has a lot to offer. There's cool things to do up here on Dundrum. There's all sorts of recreational activities. Sleeve Dunner is right there. 
Silent Valley Reservoir, lots of hiking, lots of things to do up and down this coast, you know, down as far as Kilkeel, maybe as far as the Strangford Ferry. There may be people who commute between these areas, between Kilkeel, Newcastle, Dundrum. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get down here on a train and still get up and down this coast without a car? So there would need to be some sort of public transport solution for this coastline. I've looked at the bus timetable and it's a bit of an infrequent service. If we do get the railway line reopened at Newcastle, then part of the conversation has to be how do we improve public transport, not just between Banbridge and Newcastle, but also between Newcastle and its coastal hinterlands. Some sort of frequent bus service, some sort of tram service. I don't know what the exact solution is. But it should be possible to enjoy all the wonderful things this coastal area has to offer without having to drive to it. I'm from Lurgan, never went to Newcastle very often, and the main reason is because it's just such an awkward old place to get to. I can't seem to get rid of my satellite view here because I want to go. Oh, yeah, here we go. I just want to back up a little and look at uh, the transport network in general around this region. And we have a problem here which is similar to the problem we have here in the United States with a lot of cities, the public transport network has been built around the assumption that people will commute from the suburbs into the city centre. So the railway lines all are they're like a hub and spoke pattern. It's all about getting you in and out of the city centre, but moving from one suburb to another is quite difficult. And I feel like this region has the same problem. The transport infrastructure is all built around getting you in and out of Belfast as easily as possible. So to commute from Portadown or Lurgan into Belfast is convenient. Getting from Banbridge in and out of Belfast is convenient. But to get from Lurgan to Banbridge is a bit of a pain in the neck. To get from Portadown to Banbridge is a pain in the neck. And to get from Banbridge to Newcastle is most definitely a pain in the neck. So if we think of this network as a bicycle wheel with Belfast at the hub. It's very easy to move up and down the spokes, very easy to get from Belfast to Newcastle, big air roads, but to move from one spoke to another, to move radially, is not so convenient. And if we're going to fix that problem, I believe that instead of upgrading roads, and building more dual carriageways, we should think about reopening some of the old railway lines. So the Banbridge to Newcastle line is a pretty decent candidate for getting its railway line reopened, I think. Some of the smaller rural stations along the way, maybe not so much. Castle Wellen, maybe, could be worth getting a station in there. So people could commute from Castle Wellen to Newcastle, taking a lot of vehicles off the road. There are possibilities. So, a lot to think about.